Hello, this video is to show you how to do statistical process control charts for attributes and how to differentiate between the two if you're given a problem uh, that includes a statistical process control chart for attributes. Attributes are a specific kind of data. They are binary. They are yes, no, pass, fail, good, bad. And so if you have that kind of data, then you would choose one of these charts. If you have something that is continuous data, height, weight, speed, width, things that there can be multiple values of it, there you have a variable, and I will encourage you to, to watch the, the video on statistical process control charts for variables. But in this particular case, uh, we're going to focus on attributes. And there are two types of charts uh, for statistical process control charts for attributes. The first is what's called a p-chart for proportion or percentage. And in that case, you know the number of items that are sampled. You, fi you take 100 items and you find that five of them are no good. So then you have 0.05 as the proportion or percent that, that fail. So in that specific circumstance, you would do a p-chart. In the other circumstance, you would do a c-chart where you just have counts, where you know how many were bad, but you don't know out of how big a sample or you don't have anything to compare it to. You just have the absolute number. So in that circumstance, you would do a, a c-chart. So let's look at a couple of examples uh, in that context. So here is a question. A bank randomly looks at loan applications to check for errors. They pick 10 applications at random and check for errors and count them. So here is some data then. Application Ten applications, errors, three, zero, one, three, two, four, four, one, one, zero. So in this circumstance, it's asking you to do a statistical process control chart for uh, this bank at looking at the number of errors in applications. So uh, you have, you know it's 10 applications, but in this circumstance, that's a bit of a red herring. That's, a, that's sort of to throw you off the, uh, off the scent, because in each application, you have a... a different amounts of data so you don't know how many things are written down or how many things are filled out you only know how many things are done wrong so in this circumstance you only have counts so you do a C chart and so in this case this was a bit of a red herring you only have counts right you can't say what proportion of each of these loan applications is wrong because you're looking within the loan application. Within that application, you're checking for errors. So you can't say what proportion of it is wrong. So you have a, a C chart. So in this case, we have C bar, which is the average, is equal to 19 errors, which is 3 plus 0 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 is all of the errors divided by 10 applications is equal to 1.9 errors per application. So that is the average number of errors. So if we go then, we develop, so, we, so that's the center point 
of our uh, process control chart. Upper control limit is equal to C bar plus 3 which you use, which is Z, which three is most common. I would use three unless you're told differently and you just you just pick it. Uh, but in 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 my course, th generally use three divided by the square root of C bar is equal to. Uh, so the upper control limit then is equal to one point nine plus three times the square root of 1.9 is equal to 6.04 and we look at the lower control limit for C here is equal to C bar minus 3 times the square root of C bar is equal to 1.9 minus 3 times the square root of 1.9 is equal to negative 2.24 so in this circumstance you can't have a negative number so if you wanted to get full marks on the question you would then have to say the lower control limit is equal to zero in this circumstance the low lower control limit is uh, is cannot go below zero uh, and so now we can look we have upper control limits, we have lower control limits, and we have a center point, which because this is zero is not exactly the center point. And we can go look at our data and say three is between zero and 6.04, zero is, one is, two is, so there's nothing below zero, obviously, and there's nothing above 6.04, so this process is in control. Now, perhaps you'd like to have fewer errors and you might institute things to reduce the number of errors and then reevaluate and rebenchmark the process. But in this particular circumstance, we now have uh, an understanding that this is the norm. We have, a, we have a certain amount of variation. And if we measure this over time, in future days, we'll take a look at, at, at individual applications and count the errors and if we find that some of them have more errors than six uh, then we've got to change we might have a new person who's not as careful we might have a new form where people aren't trained well enough on it and in that circumstance we have an assignable cause or a reason that there's a problem and we can go to correct it so then uh, that is a C chart Let's look at another question, and it's a retail store wants to be sure that prices entered into the system are right. It collected 100 prices from 10 different stores to check for errors. And so let's look at here store number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 wrong prices 5, 2, 7, 1, 3, 2, 8, 1, 3, 4 and so in this circumstance uh, we know price is right or wrong we don't have a measure of the price we just know it's right or wrong so we know this is an attribute so we know that this will be either a P chart or a C chart. Now, because we know they looked at 100 prices, we can do a P chart. 
right? So we know this is 5 out of 100, this is 2 out of 100, this is 7 out of 100. We looked at 10 stores, but within each store, we looked at 100 prices. So this is a P-chart. When we can do a P-chart, we should do a P-chart. It is preferable to a C-chart. So for the upper control limit then, for P, is equal to P bar plus Z times the standard deviation of P. In this case, Z is going to be equal to 3, as I said before, unless you're told differently, that is generally what I would use. Uh, lower control limit for P is equal to P bar plus Z, or sorry, P bar minus Z times the standard deviation of P. In this case, N is equal to 100. We, didn't look, we looked at 10 stores, but in each store we looked at 100 items. And so this is the place that students often go wrong. N is equal to 100 in this circumstance because we compared prices for 100 to find the proportion. It's not 10 stores, it's N is equal to 100. And then sigma P is equal to the square root of P bar times 1 minus P bar. P is always a number between 0 and 1. It's a proportion divided by n. So given that, P bar equals the average proportion of defects. So if you look here, uh, what we want to do is pick the sort of the average proportion. So we can do that in two ways. We can do this is 0.05, this is 0.02, this is 0.07, and we can calculate all of those proportions and take, then take an average. But we can also do it easy way for p bar, p bar is equal to p bar is equal to total number of defects over n times number of sample incidences. So in this case we took a hundred samples from 10 stores. So then P bar is equal to 36 which is just the total of 5, 2, 7, 1, etc divided by 100 times 10 is equal to 0 0.036. So in this case, our average number of defects when looking at this data, this is 0 0.05, 0 0.02, 0 0.07, 0 0.01, 0 0.03, the average of that is 0 0.036. So we could also, the long, the long way is to uh, calculate individual proportions and take the average. Both will give you the same answer and you can check my work if you'd like. So sigma p bar is equal to the square root of 0 0.036 times 1 minus 0 0.036 divided by 100, which is n, equals to 0 0.019. So that the upper control limit for p bar is equal to 0 0.036 plus 3 times 0 0.019 is equal to 0 0.092. And the lower control limit for P bar is equal to 0 0.036 minus 3 times 0 0.019 equals negative 0 0.02. And as it was with the count, you can't go below 0. You won't get full marks if you write a negative number. You put 0 here. So uh, sometimes you might do a, usually we do defects, but we could have just as easily done the proportion that were correct, which would be 0 0.0, no, 0 0.944, 
sorry, 0.964. Uh, and then rather than being below zero, we would have had this above one. And similarly, the upper control limit can't be above one because you can't have a proportion that is greater than one. So those are two little things uh, that you need to watch out for. If we go back then to this data, we have an upper control limit of 0.092 and a lower control limit of zero. So again, we had none of these above nine, which would have been above this upper control limit. So even though we have mistakes, we have mistakes that are within the range that is acceptable. If we started to measure and we had a store that was at 10 or 12 or 13, in that case, we would have to go in and look for why they are having more mistakes uh, than are acceptable. We might also look at the process and say, no, that process, while it is in control, is not good enough. We're going to change our standards. Then we would re-benchmark it and recalculate control limits going forward. So just to wrap up, we have attributes, binary, good, bad, pass, fail. If that is, then we develop either a p-chart where we know n and can calculate a proportion and a c-chart where we only have counts. Relatively straightforward. The only tricks are knowing that you have an attribute and then figuring out what n is. If you know what n is, p is a p chart is the preferred approach. You can't just default to a c chart. Uh, and relatively straightforward. Good luck and ask if you have any questions.